weekend and the G20 came and went and perhaps there's been little reaction on global markets to what came from that gathering. Let's go live to FIG Securities. Mark Bailey is standing by. Good morning to you, Mark. Great to see you there. So yeah, G20 came and went. Did we expect anything? Are we disappointed or were expectations low going into it regardless? Yeah, good, good, good morning, Nadine. Uh, love the new set and uh, just hope you've got some comfortable shoes on. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, to the G20, yeah, I mean, I guess nobody really expects anything to, to come out of uh, these meetings these days. It's, you know, it's kind of a, a gathering where they put together kind of a communique, which has al almost always been kind of pre-agreed. There'd be maybe some slight tweaking at the edges, as there was with this one with, with regards to global trade and, and protectionism and the G20 working against that. You know, there was some kind of uh, appeasing of the U.S. and it looks like we managed to kind of get some so, middle ground. Mark, was that, yes. uh, sorry to interrupt, but was that appeasing of the U.S. or is that the new U.S. administration bullying members into submission? Uh, look, I, th I, think it, I think it's a middle ground. I think if the, the U.S. had had their way, there, would be, there wouldn't have been any kind of talk about the global trade, you know, kind of trying to boost economies rather than, you know, there was, the, the, the rhetoric was actually uh, turned down, as you, as you rightly point out, to, to the more uh, kind of me first, America first uh, rhetoric from, from Trump and that, but again, you know, it looks like um, through Australia's uh, um, uh, Scott Morrison has managed to get other wording put in there uh, to kind of bring the balance a bit more, but it, it, so it's, it is the middle ground, but at the end of the day, you know, nobody really follows these uh, communiques, nobody really is bothered by them, you know, it's just, it's just words and we're trying to continue to uh, move forward in terms of the real economies and, you know, for, for me, the more important statistics were out on Friday night where you actually saw some kind of weaker economic data, industrial production and capacity utilisation out of the, st out of the US, which will probably lead to a, probably a slightly weaker GDP print, which is probably more worrying than anything the G20 has to offer. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, in U.S. rates sort of ended the week, I guess, better than what we might have expected as the week opened. Why was that? Yeah, look, I think, you know, in terms of the, that, the week that was, it was a very interesting week, obviously, with the Fed. And I think it, a lot of the movement that we had in, in for example, in the 10-year part of the curve and also the five-year was pre-positioning. The market was very, very short uh, U.S. Treasuries, I think it's the, some of the largest uh, short positions that we've seen in around about six or seven years. So that meant that if the statement wasn't particularly hawkish and the Q&A session wasn't hawkish and the dot blue dot plots weren't hawkish, then the market would probably rally. And that's exactly what we saw. Close the week at around about 2.5% uh, in, in uh, 10 years. But in terms of the, the forecast going forward, we are seeing a huge divergence in terms of where it will end, you know, mid-year mid through, uh, through this year, at the end of June. We're seeing forecasts as low as 2.2, up to 3%, with the median of around about 50 uh, economists, around about that 2.65% level, so slightly higher than we are now. We will get a, a good steer in terms of where, what we should be thinking from the Fed, as nine um, Fed speeches are scheduled this week, six of which are yeah. voting members. Well, so that's that what I was going to ask you, Mark. I mean, we've had the dot plots. We had Janet Yellen's press conference. What more do we want to hear coming from these Fed speakers, or will they just start to muddy the water once again? I mean, this was a very well-telegraphed rate hike. The market responded. Uh, what, what can they add now? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess typically I, I generally agree with that statement, but I think what was interesting for the uh, upcoming March meeting was that you actually started to see the t t uh, a change in tone from some of the regional Fed presidents, and then that was kind of reinforced by Yellen about a week uh, before the actual FOMC meeting. So they did actually indicate some slight subtle changes in terms of some of the language that they were using. Now, it'd be what the market will be specifically looking for will be if there's any tone to, uh, towards a more hawkish stance, because they, they didn't, as you say, didn't change those dot plots um, in the uh, economic projections update. So they're still only expecting another two rate hikes this year okay. to, to complete it for three this year. So if there's any subtle changes in the language, I think that's what the markets will react to. Great. Mark Bailey, always great to have you on. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Nadine. Have now we're going to take our viewers live to Sydney. ASIC is holding its annual conference called Future Focus, and the chair, Greg Medcraft, is being introduced by Kelly O'Dwyer at this stage of the